Congresswoman Ayanna Presley shining a spotlight on a condition millions of women will face. It's an autoimmune disease that causes hair loss called alopecia. The Congresswoman revealed her struggle just the other day in a very powerful video. I am making peace with having alopecia. I have not arrived there. I am very early in my alopecia journey. But I'm making progress every day. You can feel her emotional struggle. She says she hopes this will start a conversation about personal struggles that people navigate, and she hopes it creates awareness. Alopecia is a medical term for baldness. It's an autoimmune disease that causes hair to fall out from the scalp, face, and other parts of the body. Dr. Jonathan Cantor is a dermatologist with the Florida Center for Dermatology in St. Augustine and joins us here on The Morning Show to talk about alopecia. Um, they're not sure what causes the immune system to attack otherwise healthy follicles in otherwise healthy people. Right. Uh, you know, this is one of the really difficult things. And there are a number of different forms of alopecia out there. You know, with the congresswoman, her situation sounds a little bit like alopecia areata or alopecia totalis, where she really saw a complete loss of all the hair on her scalp. You know, that's actually, fortunately, one of the less common forms of alopecia. So that is autoimmune. Your own body's immune system is reacting in some way to it, sort of like rheumatoid arthritis or diabetes or many other conditions. We don't really know exactly what triggers it. Certainly there are some thoughts. There are some, you know, there's some genetic uh, preponderance. So in people who've got a strong family history, for example, it's going to be more likely. But it's hard to say what it is, what's causing it. And, you know, the struggle here is that there are so many different forms of hair loss. And when you start to lose a little bit of hair, like the congresswoman was talking about in the video, the thing to realize is that does not mean that you're going to lose all your hair. In fact, she is the unusual extreme example when you're going to lose all your hair. Uh, typically, with hair loss, you're going to get a small patch, one or two, not this type of extreme, um, you know, full, full head loss. Yeah, but there are those people who, you know, they, they wrap their heads in, in a turban or what have you, and then they wake up in the morning and all of a sudden there, there are clumps that fall out, or, you know, they're combing their hair and they look in the sink and they're like, oh my gosh. Absolutely, and, you know, it's one of the scary things is that, you know, hair loss, you know, we're always losing hair, and that's the important thing to understand. Hair goes through cycles. It goes through an antigen phase where it's growing. It goes through a telogen phase where it's sort of resting, where we're losing the hair. So when we are, every single day you're going to be losing hair. You're losing hair in the shower. You're losing hair when you walk around. The problem is when somebody has a disorder, the hair suddenly is increasing in its rate of hair loss and that is where the trouble comes in because you're noticing more and more that you're losing in the shower you're losing on the pillowcase as she talked about in her video and that can be so emotionally harrowing for patients and it occurs in all ages it occurs in children too absolutely uh, you know in children you're typically going to be dealing with one of those immune forms like alopecia areata uh, the good news and there is hope here the good news is that for most of these uh, types of hair loss, there are things that we can do, uh, whether it is injecting steroids to kind of reduce that immune response into the scalp, uh, or whether it's other systemic medications or other even topical medications that we can apply. So the message I would have for people is if you're starting to see hair loss, first of all, don't give up hope. Don't suffer in silence. I mean, I think that's one of the great services that this type of you know, outreach really performs is don't suffer in silence. Go see your doctor because there probably are options that we can consider to slow or halt or even turn around the hair loss that people are seeing. So it is encouraging to know that there are therapies available, but also know that it's a lifelong problem that you're going to have to deal with. So that's true for something like alopecia totalis, like the congresswoman has. Absolutely, it's a tendency towards getting it, although there are people who, where that resolves and they never have to deal with it again. Uh, for the more common forms of alopecia, because alopecia is just a broad term, so for the more common forms, for example, telogen effluvium, where the hair just sorts to kind of shed all synchronously, often it's after surgery or stress, that often is you know, self-limited. That's often going to get better by itself. Uh, for scarring alopecia, it's like for traction alopecia, where people are braiding their hair tightly, for example, and that's causing torsion on the hair, and that is causing inflammation and irritation. If you stop the underlying process that's causing it, often you can get the problem to turn around. So there is hope, and you know, there is reason to make sure you reach out when you're, when you're going through that. And, and as you saw with the representative, not only do you deal with the physical, you have to deal with the emotional as well. Absolutely. And that's one of the big challenges here. You know, hair loss, hair is very, very personal to us. I mean, you know, with people societally, hair is a very, it's a sacred thing, particularly to women, but to men as well, as all those Rogaine commercials from mm -hmm. 20 years ago can attest to. Uh, so, you know, we really value our hair. And for many people, it's tied up with their identity, not usually as much as with the representative, but certainly, you know, people, it's tied to their identity. So having that hair loss is it's sort of an emotional blow. 
And so it's important to make sure you talk about that with your family, you talk about that with your doctor, uh, because sometimes realizing that there are options to treat it can be helpful, and sometimes just coming to grips with it and understanding, listen, this may be something that is defining for me, but this does not define me. This is not who I am. And being able to lift yourself above that is often a really, really powerful thing, but that's not something you can do alone. So it's important to reach out, your community, your family, and your doctors to really try to focus on that. And I, I think that's what the representative really wanted to do with her message. She wanted to say, okay, I, I want to create a dialogue here. I want to create an awareness so that people know that, number one, they're not alone. Number two, it's okay to talk about it. Number three, you've got to talk about it. Absolutely. And, you know, there's precedent for this. If, uh, you know, you look at, for example, uh, Google trend searches to see kind of what level of interest people have in things when celebrities or public figures come out with diseases. There is a surge of interest that occurs in the public and a surge of awareness that occurs. And so that can be very helpful to really open that dialogue, to continue that dialogue, and can make a real difference for people. So you're not alone. Don't bottle it up. Talk about it. Dr. Tanner, always a pleasure. Appreciate it.